There are woodcuts dated back to the 16th century in Germany featuring a tall, disfigured man with only white spheres where his eyes should be. They called him the Grossman or the Tall Man. He was a fairy who lived in the Black Forest. Bad children who crept out into the woods at night would be chased by that tall man. He wouldn't leave them alone until he caught them, or until the children told the parents what they had done. Even then, there was this, this chilling account of an old journal dated around 1702. It's translated from German, so the words might be inaccurate. My child Lars is gone, taken from his bed. The only thing we found is a scrap of black clothing. It feels like cotton, but it's softer, thicker. Lars came into my bedroom the other day screaming at the top of his lungs that the angel is outside. I asked him what he was talking about and he told me some nonsense fairy story about de Grossman. He said he went into the groves by our village and he found one of our cows dead, hanging by a tree. I thought nothing of it at first, but now he's gone. We must find Lars and my family must leave before we're killed. I'm sorry, my son. I should have listened. May God forgive me. So there's another one, uh, but it's actually from a book. So once the Slender Man began popping up in this thread that I was in, I'm, I'm sure something about it seemed familiar. Yeah, I'm an amateur folklorist, so I have a few books lying around. It took me a while, but I finally found something in W.K. McNeilson's Ghost Stories of the American South. Most of the tales collected are their, their transcripts from recordings of other folklorists, but McNeil compiled them and he offers notes. It's a really handy book. Anyway, this particular story appears in the book's seventh section, Other Supernatural Creatures. When I was younger, a cousin of mine came to live with us. He was older than me and my sisters, maybe 16, 17, and they were the only folks he had left in this world, really. And he was the awfulest liar you could ever know. Anything he'd tell you was a lie, almost. I liked him all right. We slept in a loft in the summer because it was cooler up there, and in the winter we slept on the floor closest to the stove. My sisters had their own room, so one night my cousin wakes me up by punching me in the shoulder, and it's summer so we're both up in the loft, and my first thought when he woke me up was to punch him out, because I'm not happy being waked up, you know? But before I can say anything, he puts his hand over my mouth. Listen, he says, so I listen real careful. It's the scratching like something's on the roof. And the roof is right over our head, mind you, because we're in the loft. I was a trifle rattled, but I wasn't having none of it, so I says to him, It's just some raccoon or a cat. No, says John. I heard it before I woke you up. It's like footsteps, like something's walking up there. I wasn't taking no truck with that. I told you he was the awfulest liar, so I went back to sleep. But the next day, John tried to tell Pa about it. And Pa wasn't having no truck about it either. But one night later on, when we were all having supper, Pa sent out my younger sister to get water from the pump. We headed back. After a while, we heard Lily scream. Then it was Ma who got up first, and then Pa. We all stayed at the table because we were likely to get in trouble if Lily got hurt. Soon enough, though, we heard Pa and Ma shouting too. So we all got up to see if they needed help. All they had was the water pail that Lily carried out, and there wasn't no sign of her. At first, I didn't understand what was going on, with both Pa and Ma shouting. But by the time my other sisters came out, they started crying, and my cousin was just standing there, in the yard, looking off towards something. It's the man walking yonder, he says and he pointed out across the field. No one's listening to him but me. And he kept saying it. It's that man walking yonder. 
You already know it's supper time, so you know the sun is setting, so it's hard to see, but I looked over that field towards the back of the house. The whole thing lit up orange, and there was this row of black trees that was, that was the edge of the woods, you know? And I swear to you, I saw one of those trees moving like a man walking away. But that couldn't have been a man, because there ain't no man that tall and skinny. Pa saw it too. I think he made us go inside and locked all the doors. He made us keep still while he got his rifle. We waited like that all night, Ma crying the whole time. When the sun came up, we took a wagon and headed into town and told folks what happened. Though as I recall, nothing much came of it. John ran off a few weeks later. We got a new house closer to the mill where Pop was working. I still can't manage to look at trees near sunset though, especially on windy days when they all move back and forth. Like a man. Walking away. From what I've read so far, and based on various internet memes and other sites debating Slenderman, he operates on the power of belief, and he feeds on fear. Um, another topic is the operator symbol, which for fear of my own safety I won't draw or write, but uh, there, there were many debates on what it is or how it connects to the Slenderman. Some say that when you're looking at it, you can teleport. So. The operator symbol is a representation of him, bore into the minds of those haunted by him, so that way he can teleport to them wherever they are. Some say that it represents his face, the circle representing his head, the X being the featurelessness. But one far-fetched theory says that it's a window that he uses to peer into our world. This is probably one of my favorite quotes. There's another way of looking at it. Perhaps it doesn't mean anything at all. You describe the meaning to it. Since you are familiar with the mythos, seeing the symbol makes you think of Slenderman. And since Slenderman operates on the power of belief, it turns it into a kind of mimetic thought weapon. But I'm done researching now. I can't stand this feeling. I'm really paranoid, and it feels as though I'm being watched. This was a short-lived research project, but I don't want to learn anymore. From what I've read, he exists based on belief, and if that's the case, my research may provoke him. I started this all because I watched some Marble Hornets videos after someone had mentioned them on Facebook, and it piqued my curiosity. It made me remember something. And then happened a few years ago. Something I've tried really hard to forget. I'm sleeping. And at the time, my bed was facing parallel to my hallway. I woke one night after everyone was asleep in my house. I was staring at the top of my bed. See, I had a bunk bed that me and my little brother shared, and I was on the bottom bunk. And I had this unnerving feeling in my stomach felt like someone was watching me and it almost felt like I was in my hallway. You know, being an inquisitive little kid, I, I turned my head to look. Thinking back, I wish that I hadn't. There was something tall and dark standing there, staring at me. It was so dark, so none of its features were clear, but I could make out its silhouette. It was a tall, thin creature that just stood there, stared at me. I tried to scream, but no noise came from my throat, and immediately after the thing took a step towards me, I blacked out. I can't even describe what it felt like. And then one second I was petrified, and the next I was staring at the top of my bed again. The next morning I told my mom, and being the narrow-minded adult that she was, she told me that I must have been dreaming. But watching those videos brought 
back that memory, and after reading up on them, I want to bury that memory, because if, if what they say is true, he lives on belief and fear, and I wish that I could say that, I wish that I could say that this was just another creepy pasta that, you know, some sleep-deprived teen was suddenly inspired to record after downing a can of monster and reading too many scary memes. I wish I could tell you that I'm just making all this up to give some creepy pasta lover a good scare, but I... I can't. Everything I've said is true, and honestly, I don't care if anyone believes me, I just want to get this out. That Slender Man is real. I've seen him, and... And... I give this bit of advice to anyone else who's seen him, or wants to be brave or foolish enough to go find him. Don't. I got lucky. And I was able to get rid of the memory and not think about it, but others may not be that lucky. So I leave you with this. Slenderman is real. Don't go looking for him, and if you do see him, forget you ever did. For those who stare into the abyss eventually find the abyss staring back.